Hi guys, Wizman500 here, back with another video, sitting down for another uh, folding knife review. Um, opening up the video with, of course, that is the, uh, the Gerber Profile. This is the folding version. Um, good knife. I gave it a pretty pretty positive review. A couple things I didn't like about it. Weight and a few other things that I talked about in that review. Go check it out. And if you look right at the title, I uh, question its hard, hard use. I said this could be a hard use folder. Um, I talk about all that sort of thing, the hard use factor about this knife in particular. Um, yeah, it's still it's got a little bit of blade wiggle. I did a lot of baton with this. Of course, I broke the tip off. Um, no up and down. But side to side, I do get, as you can see, I do get a little bit of wiggle there. So, a couple things to uh, to mention, especially when we're talking about hard use folders. Um, so yeah, it could function in that role pretty good. Um, so let's just pull that out of there. But I really wanted a true hard use folder. Um, and I was shopping around, I was looking at a couple um, pretty decent ones, some nice ones. But the one that's really stuck out to me as true hard use folders was this company right here. You've seen this before. This is my little blue um, exercise book, whatever. I keep notes in here about knives that I want to buy. And yeah, this company, whoops, not that company. That is a good company though, Spyderco. As you can see, I've got quite a few knives written down there. Um, but in here, the one that stick out, stuck out the most, especially for hard use, is this company right here. Cold Steel. I've been watching uh, a, a bunch of reviews on this knife, and from what I've heard, what a hard use folder this is, it's, I bet you could probably guess, you've seen it in an earlier video this year, which one it is, but uh, it feels really good when I can come in here with a pen and give it a big old check mark. That means that I bought it and yes I did. Here it is. Here it comes. Listen to it snap open. This is the Cold Steel Voyager Large. Now this is a knife. <laughs> you heard it open up um, when I, op when I uh, just opened it there a second ago. This sucker snaps open. When you open this knife, heads turn. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a big knife. Now, it's not as big as some of their other ones. I'll talk about the three different versions. This is the large version, of course. And you can also get this in a Tanto version. Um, kind of stepping away a little bit from the Tanto blades. Um, I think these clip points and uh, drop points are going to be a little bit more useful um, for <clears throat> just utility tasks. But the Tanto is kind of moving away from that. When you get into talking about Tantos, this gets into more of... Um, it just reminds me of fighting, um, especially with long swords and stuff like that. Something like the Japanese used to use um, way, back van, way back when and to this day. So that's kind of what uh, Tanto blades remind me of. Yes, I do have a couple Tanto blades and I do like them. Their tip strength is really good. I'll say that about Tantos. Even this tip strength right here on this regular version, pretty good. Nice balance between uh, thick and thin. Jumping right in, by the way, I got my talking points off to the side here. That is a 4 inch blade clip point, as you know. It kind of looks like a Bowie knife. Um, this is the large size. The medium size has a 3 inch blade, and the XL has a 5.5 inch blade. Now, I was actually considering getting the XL version of this. That would have been a knife to review. I'm kind of regretting that I got this version, but I'm very pleased with this one. And uh, you've seen that I had the holdout on there too, so I might get the large holdout um, in future dates. So stay tuned if you like cold steel knives. I'm very impressed with this one. The funny thing was when I started, you know, carrying this and handing it off to a couple friends and whatnot, um, they weren't really that excited about it. Now I'm not going to say none of them were excited about the knife, but they seen it and they're like, meh, Outdoors Guy 500. <laughs> um, but anyways, I handed him, or I, ta I told him about it. He was like, yeah, Voyager, Cold Steel, meh, which is understandable. They do have a lot of hype. Um, and they do um, really sell their knives. Let me tell you, go look at any of the Cold Steel uh, Proof, Perfection, whatever they're called. P perfection of Proof or something like that. Um, just type in Cold Steel Knife Test up in the search bar up on YouTube and you'll get a whole bunch of videos. And I think they're truth. I don't think, I don't really see that any of it is untrue. Um, some of it is pretty wild though. I definitely wouldn't put my knives through that. But anyways, like I said... Um, Outdoors Guy 500 was like, yeah, 
meh. And then I actually got on, I actually handed him the knife and he got, you know, messing with it and whatnot. He kind of started to warm up to it, so we'll see how he likes it. Um, I kind of want him to get into it. And a couple of people didn't say they liked the handle, but we'll talk about the handle when we get into that talking point. Um, full flat ground, too, by the way, getting into the blade. Comes razor sharp out of the box. You can see the stonewash finish. Very nice stonewash finish on that. I kind of like that stonewash finish. At first, I was, wasn't really a big, huge fan of it. But I kind of like it. It looks really good. Um, it's kind of got that rough feeling to it. Really nice. I kind of really like it. And let me tell you, it whole, um, with this Aus 8 steel, which is what it is getting into steel, um, it's an Aus 8A steel. And somebody might say, well, what's the difference between Aus 8 and Aus 8A? There really isn't any difference. They're pretty much the same thing. But this steel, Aus 8 or Aus 8A, um, is not very uh, stainless. So that stone wash finish does help to the uh, add to the uh, stainless a little bit better than bead blast. I can tell you that. I know Aus 8 blades. I've seen actually seen Aus 8 blades with a bead blast finish that have rusted. So that's something to look out for. I took this out in, a, in the salt water a while back, um, and it did pretty well. When I got home, I just wiped it down with some oil. So it did really well, and that stone wash finish is just really really nice. I really like it. Um, it fits the handle and the style of the knife. So that's my steel discussion. Holds an edge really well. Um, like I said, it's not really a, a special steel. Um, it will go dull, so don't think it is. Um, yeah, it holds its edge pretty well, but rust uh, and stuff like that, rust uh, corrosion resistance, I'll say, um, isn't the greatest. So just watch out for that. Um, just throw a little bit of uh, oil on that when you get home. <clears throat> or from whatever you're doing, especially if you're in the salt water. Serrations, this does come in a serrated version, both in the Tanto version and in the uh, just this version right here, the clip point. To be honest, not a huge fan of the serrations uh, that uh, Cold Steel does. I think I said in my Spyderco Manix 2 video, I said, you know, I'm kind of stepping away from the serrations a little bit and I'll hold to that because I really like these plain edge knives. Um, yeah, serrations are good in some instances, but for this, um, I'm kind of really leaning towards the plain edge version. They come in 50% serrated and also 70, 80. Um, so it'd be like serrated, like up to here. Yeah, I just not, I just don't feel. I think it takes away from the uh, utility of the whole, um, the whole knife itself. Getting into uh, locking. Locking is uh, Cold Steel's triad lock. Now I've never really talked about the triad lock before, but um, I know other people have in their videos, but I've never talked about it on mine because this is my first cold steel knife. So let's talk about it right now. Um, how it works is, it's like a lockback design. I'll bring in a lockback knife just to show you the difference. So here is the Buck um, Omni. Great knife. Reviewed it. Go check out the review. But as you can see, the tang of the knife here and the lock bar sit right on top of each other. And if, especially when you get into hard use, those two just wear wear away really easily because there's cl there's contact. All the shock that you're putting on um, the cutting edge is going right to that lock bar, and sometimes it can deform and other things, especially when you're doing hard tasks. Well, with the triad lock, what it is is there's actually a stop pin right there <clears throat> that stops the blade from actually contacting that lock bar. So there's actually a space between the two, and that um, that stop pin right there takes all the uh, all the pressure from the cutting edge. So there's no actual direct contact between between the two. Also, there's room. <clears throat> um, you can see that little groove right there in the tang of the knife as well. There's also uh, that's for as the knife wears, the actual knife settles down. It's self-adjusting and uh, it settles down for an even, even tighter lockup. So that's that. And it is self-contained just like this one so you don't need steel liners. Um, but they did put uh, aluminum liners in there so we'll talk about that. Um, but that is an amazing amazing lock. I did baton a little bit with this knife. Not a lot. <clears throat> My, maybe not as much as I should have. I couldn't really resist it though because um, I've heard about how tough the, the um, <clears throat> the triad lock is. I really wanted to try it myself and see if, you know, ev what everybody was talking about is true. So that's locking. It locks up really tight, really solid, out of box. Um, it was really good and right now it's really good. Really tight lock up and the speed is really good. 
too. But we'll talk about that here in a minute. <clears throat> Alright, so here comes the handle. This is what they call the Grivery handle by Cold Steel. Let's talk about Grivery just for a second because I don't hear this talked a whole lot about it. Um, and I didn't really know a whole lot about Grivery either. I don't know if that's how you say it or not, but I call it Grivery. Um, it's actually what, what Grivery is made of is poly... Alright, let me try and say this. Polypethylamide. Um, which is made in automotive parts and high temperature electronic connectors. Um, pretty much what this is, this is cold steel taking that material and making it into their glass reinforced um, material for their handle. Go look it up on uh, Wikipedia, there's a little blog there, it shows, says um, what it's all about and everything. Um, but kind of interesting, they took something that was supposed to be meant for automotive parts and um, electrical components and they kind of threw it into uh, a knife handle. And I think it's worked out. This handle is very tough, very durable. It is a fairly thick um, thick handle, so it's not going to be as thin as some other knives. Um, but though nice and rounded, nice and radius. And that is um, kind of a cool texturing on there, too. Let's get a nice little close-up. <clears throat> very nice texturing on there. You can kind of looks cool close-up. It looks cool far away. And, man, does it ever lock in. The jimping on the back there, not really happening. There's nothing going on. Put a little bit of skateboard tape, or even uh, get a Dremel tool and cut some serration or some uh, some jimping in the back there. I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to leave it like it was. Um, just a little bit of ribbing right there. That Spyderco did, or sorry, <laughs> Spyderco. Uh, that cold steel did. Sorry, um, and there's nothing really there. But the side traction really makes up for it, and you get that deep finger choil, and it just feels really good in the hand. Also, reverse grip is really good because that flat right there. Put your thumb right there, really nice, really comfortable, and that side traction is really good. One thing I will say about the handle though is that tears up your pocket a lot where the pocket clip is. This pocket clip is very, very tight, so that's going to tear your pocket to pieces. Um, I've heard that some people just do a little bit of piece of tape right there and then sand from that up. Um, just make sure you don't over sand it. Um, so that's one thing that I did notice is going to tear your pocket up. It's really rough on the pocket, but man, did that little pocket clip. I've heard, also heard people say that that pocket clip is too little, it should be longer. That pocket clip is perfect. It's perfectly strong as it is and it's blackened, which I really like. <clears throat> so that's really the pocket clips held in by three um, torques right there and you can flip it. And it is a tip up carry, um, which is good and you can't flip it to tip down, which is a good thing. I don't think you really have to. Uh, so that's really good. I really like that. Blade centering is also really good and you can take the knife apart. Um, so if you want to do uh, do a dirt coat or a spray paint job or something like that, um, what blade retention? You can kind of hear it, kind of moving around in the handle there, and it is kind of you can I can even do it here, but it's not going to shake out. But I can what I can do is I can hold the knife like this and get a good little f wrist flick on it, and I can deploy it like that. But it takes a lot of force to do it. I can't do it in front of the tripod, so um, that's something to mess with. Also, the thumb studs, they say that you can unscrew those thumb studs kind of with that screw eye right there and unscrew it and put a little uh, zip tie in there. I never really tried that. Um, but anyways, yeah, that driver handle, really nice. It just feels really comfortable getting into comfort. It just feels really good. Also, you can come back here, so if you wanted to do like a swipe or a chop type thing, that locks in really good too because you have that, um, that little finger groove right there. Um, really nice. And then up here just reverse everything. The balance is really good. It feels really good in the hand and it's just amazing. I really like it. <clears throat> Speed opening system. It is um, a lockback aka triad lock, whatever you want to call it. It's a lockback like design I'll say but the speed is really good. What I do <clears throat> is I put my thumb, my thumbnail right on that thumb stud and then just give it a good flick and it comes out pretty readily. I think I gave this one a hit right here um, about speed. Um, the thumb studs are a little bit smaller on this one so just depending on what you want I think this is going to be a little bit of a better option. Um, but yeah speed is really good and it's smooth and really nice <clears throat> and you can adjust that pivot point right there. Pocket clip like I already talked about that pocket clip is really good it carries fairly deep 
cares about that much out of the pocket. Very nice. Carries very well. Like I said, reversible. And it doesn't need to be longer. It's good like the way it is. Um, and it really fits the knife. Like I said, be careful that that doesn't um, tear your pocket apart. That might be something to look out for. Weight on the medium one is um, 3.1 ounces. Once again, the medium version is uh, 3 inch blade. So that's pretty good. That's, that's not a bad weight for the <clears throat> for the 3 inch version. On the 4 inch version, this version right here, this is 4.6 ounces, which is pretty good. It's not as light as some other options that I've shown you on camera before, but it is, excuse me, a good carry weight. And then the XL is 7.2 ounces, but remember that's a 5.5 inch blade, so really not that bad of a weight. Um, also, something that I forgot when I talked about handle is there is inset um, aluminum handles. So it is aluminum, that makes it very light. Um, you might say, why didn't they, uh, you know, uh, mill that out or whatever, like I always harp on. I gave this one really good rankings because it had milled out handles. Really, you don't really need to because that aluminum is light enough as it is, and if you do that, then you're just spending time, and they're going to make the knife more expensive by trying to uh, hollow that aluminum out. So that's, that's what I said about it. That's what I thought. Um, <clears throat> so that was very good. I don't mind the aluminum in the handle. Um, and yeah, sure, it does add to a little bit of the strength, but the weight is very, very good on it. Very, very carryable, and uh, definitely not as heavy as some other knives that I've carried. Um, price, price is pretty good off eBay. I think I paid 64 at 65 ish, so that's really not that bad. Just about the same for the XL, and I think the three inches, the medium one, is a little bit cheaper. <clears throat> so that was pretty good. I was really happy about that. About the same price as this one here. So these two are really close competitors. <clears throat> Getting into category, definitely a tactical knife. Definitely something that you're going to defend yourself with. Um, and it rocks and rolls in that area. Even an imi imi imitation knife. Um, not imitation, sorry. Uh, imitate, uh, I can't even say it. But man, oh man, when you hear that knife snap open... Like I said, heads, heads turn, like who's got that knife? I mean, that sounded massive, and yeah, it is. Um, I really wish I should have got an XL. I really should have. <clears throat> so that's what it would categorize. Also, like I said in my EDC 2013 video, um, I, sometimes I do like the bigger knives for EDC just because I can do bigger tasks with them and uh, stuff like that. I can do bigger, bigger things with them, um, something that a smaller knife can't do. Um, definitely wanted to bring along for work. That's what I carried this knife for. I carried that with me during work. Um, my, as, of course, I am a landscaper, so this came in very, ha very handy for that. And I think this one would do the same. And I think the triad lock there, is, which is very strong, by the way, I think that would do um, really nice in that role as well. Blade options. I've been bringing them in all along. Of course, the uh, Buck Omni 12-point um, folder. That is a head-to-head -head competitor. Let me see if I can find the weight on that 12-point folder for you. Just hang on one second. See if I can dig it out. <clears throat> I've got all kinds of notes sitting here. Buck Omni 12-point folder, 4.6 ounces. I think that is just about the same. Yeah, th these two are the same weight. I think this one actually, to be honest, oh, those are like really close. So. <laughs> Um, whichever one you wanted to go with, like I said, these two knives are close competitors. I do, I don't know which which one I like best, really. It's hard to say. I like this one because it has a pocket clip. Um, I like this one a bit more. Um, I don't know, just this one feels really nice. I like that finger choil on the blade as well. Um, you really, you can't go wrong with either one of these knives. Once again, if you want something that's going to fit in your pocket, go with this one because this one does have a pocket clip. <coughs> And also this one. Here is the Gerber profile. Um, I already said in the first of the video, that's how I brought in this video. A little bit shorter of a blade, um, but I think these two are also... I think these two are the same weight, believe it or not. Look at the blade lengths. So yeah, I mean, in that role as hard use folder, this one might be a close competitor as well. Something that I've abused a lot is that, uh, that Gerber profile. Extra features. Um, it does come with a lanyard hole right there. Take a little look at it. Not 
the biggest lanyard hole I've ever seen on a knife. I think this one is be a little bit bigger. So yeah, not the hugest, hugest lanyard hole I've ever seen on a knife, but it will um, do the trick. Um, and that's really about it. That's all I can say about the knife. Um, really good, really good comfort. And you can even do a little bit of a choke up. You have to be really careful though. Um, maybe even do a little bit of a choke up there just because of that finger choil. It's not going to let the knife slip up um, if you put your finger right there and maybe do some detailed tasks. So that could be something that you could do as well. Cold steel. I'm really impressed, of course, made in Taiwan, so if you guys like the U.S. produced stuff, maybe that's something to uh, to look out for, but I mean, for quality level, you can't go wrong. Um, this is uh, very good. I really like I really like this. I mean, it's what a great knife this is. I was very impressed when I got it, um, and I was very happy with it, and I am to this day. I'm going to keep carrying this for a long time to come. Cold Steel Voyager, guys, thanks for... Jumping along with my first Cold Steel knife review. I'm very excited about this Cold Steel Voyager. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Thanks Cold Steel a lot. I really enjoy this knife.